This is F Society IRC Podcast, a Mr. Robot show. I'm your moderator of this chat, Hiroja Shai. We are now on episode number nine, Marion. Man, I thought last episode, White Rose, was a phenomenal episode, but Marion just, wow, takes a cake. There was a tremendous amount of acting on parts of everyone uh, on the show, particularly, uh, I'm not going to say his name, uh, Rami McCall and uh, Christian Slater, uh, Mr. Robot and Elliot, as they basically had, a, for most part of the sh- of the show, they have what is a two-hander, where it's just, you know, two actors, you know, I guess you can say carrying um, the episode for the most part, the, the scenes that they're in and their interactions um, was just great. Um, Angela and um, Darlene, the actresses that, that um, played those two characters were just on top of it and very engaging overall this episode. Um, extremely impressed by everything that happened in this episode and it pretty much answered the question that everyone believed it to be you know whether or not Mr. Robot was real or not and I have been going back and forth on whether or not it was the case and would have been happy um, if it were not the case if he wasn't real that he had to be the the image of Elliot's father but not necessarily the personality But it turns out that, in fact, not only is he Mr. Robot the image of Elliot's father, but in fact, he may, in fact, be a bit of his father's personality in this this delusion that um, Elliot is holding. Uh, But before... But we're going to get into all of that. Uh, what is real is going to be um, a little bit shorter. There wasn't too much hacking or any of that going on, but there there will be a little bit in that section. But uh, let's get into the episode. So the episode opens with like a flashback and it's Mr. Robot and he's at a computer shop. You can see the shop is very old. Uh, the radio is playing. It's talking about uh, the World Series and how it had been canceled. Uh, Mr. Robot answers the phone and he talks to a customer, which we'll talk about um, and what is real. Uh, but he, he helps a customer with a computer order. And then an, another customer comes into the shop and physically comes in the shop and he's yelling at Mr. Robot. And he's basically saying that Elliot, his son, had um, stolen money from him. And Mr. Robot is trying to understand it. The customer gets more agitated. He doesn't care. He just wants his money back. He, uh, he's being very much of a dick. He accuses uh, Mr. Robot of having a job that his retarded nephew could do. And uh, Mr. Robot just tells him to leave. He's not going to help him. And he can't believe this. He goes, you know, I have to ask you to leave. You know, you need to leave. Um, so the customer leaves. Um, as soon as the customer leaves, uh, Mr. Robot uh, yells for the back. Elliot, a very young Elliot, comes out. He must be like eight or nine years old at the time. And he at first denies it, but Mr. Robot just looks at him and then he produces um, the money that he has stolen. And um, he, t- he basically just looks at Elliot, takes it to the 20, and he asks Elliot, you know, uh, what movie do you want to see? You want to see Stargate or Time Cop? Um, Mr. Elliot was a. Uh, our robot, Mr. Robot, is looking at the paper. Um, Elliot points out to the ad for Pulp Fiction. Uh, Mr. Robot is like, I never heard it before. Can I take you to this? It doesn't matter. It starts in 15 minutes. Let's go. The 20 bucks, uh, basically the money that he stole, I uh, was going to cover it. Elliot doesn't understand uh, why he's not in trouble. And basically, Mr. Robot tells him, you know, basically he's a good kid. Um, he didn't, you know, he had done something bad, but he's still a good kid. But basically, uh, he says, you know, what he did was wrong, but sometimes, but that guy was a prick, and sometimes that matters more. And so they close up shop, and they go to the movies. And then it kind of flashes forward, and uh, what you see as they're leaving is you see the sign for our, the computer shop, which says Mr. Robot, and it's the same kind of uh, design as the title card for the show. And then it kind of flashes forward uh, to it going out of business, and then becoming another another place of business. I think first it was a, a dry cleaner, then a flower shop, then a tattoo shop, and then eventually the same location becomes a bank of E, uh, which is Evil Corp. And then you come to where we left off last episode with Mr. Roat being in Elliot's apartment, um, staring at one another, and they start having a conversation. Elliot doesn't understand how he's you know alive after all these years. Uh, Mr. Roat tried to explain to him. He said, you know, I'm was waiting for you to recognize me, you know, kind of shocked that you really didn't, but 
you know, you understand, you're, you know, you're sick. Elliot is very upset. He overthrows the chair, you know, the chair, the table, throws Mr. Robot up against the wall. And he's like, you know, how could this be? After 20 years, how could you come and not say anything, not do anything? Darlene knew about it. Uh, Mr. Robot is like, you know, you're not well, you're not sick. Um, you basically forgot about him. You forgot about your sister, which is very discerning, you know, discerning to uh, uh, Mr. Robot. Um, but that's not the point. We need to stick to the plan. Elliot doesn't understand this, how he could be alive for 20 years, how he could come back into his life. And he still wants the plan that they've been working on to go forward. You know, that's insane. He's he's crazy. And Elliot keeps saying this, I'm crazy, I'm crazy, this is crazy, you're crazy, I'm crazy. And Mr. Rob is trying, trying to calm him down, saying, you know, you can't be so loud. Elliot's like, you know, what's happening right now basically is a reason for him to be loud. Mr. Rob appears out the door and basically says, you know, the window and basically is like, you know, we don't want people to hear. We don't want the wrong people to hear. And he, you know, and he tells Elliot about his impromptu visit with uh, Tyler Wellick. Um, it's very important that their conversation is private, that nobody knows. Um, and Elliot's like, he doesn't understand. And he's like, well, you know, you've been popping these pills. You've been seeing that shrink Krista. You know, Darlene, you know, people are trying to control you, put in a haze to prevent you from doing what needs to be done. And Elliot's like, you still want to go through this plan? And he goes, yes, it's very important. He goes, no, you no, this is crazy. You know, I want answers. And, and Mr. Ross says, well, if you want answers, then you need to stop asking questions and follow me. And so Mr. Robot walks out the door and, and Elliot falls suit. So we cut away to Gideon, and he's with his partner, uh, his husband, and he's trying to get ready for work, and his partner knows he's stressed and tries to calm him down and, and make sure everything's going to be okay, that Gideon's a good person, that they're gonna he's going to figure this out, things, things will work out. And even if Gideon does lose everything, like the company fails, he still has, you know, a love of his life with him. A roof over his head, he still has, you know... His, his husband with him he has someone who loves him and, and they're going to work this out that it's going to be okay and that, that scene ends and it interchanges with Angela and she walks into the lawyer's office and she tells the lawyer that she had quit all safe and she's there to volunteer and help with the case and the lawyer is like no this is too high profile a case you can't be on this case you need to find something for you a job something to do um, you can't work on this case. Basically, she rejects his, Angela's help. Um, she can't be Angela's cause. Angela needs to find some type of purpose for herself as they work on this litigation to sue Evil Corp. So Angela leaves the office and she gets a phone call and it's um, from Darlene. And Darlene's like, I need your help. I need to find Elliot. Do you know where Elliot is? He's not at work. And Angela's like, no, I don't, I don't know where Elliot is. And she goes... Well, we're in a state of emergency. He he has slipped out again like last time. And Angela's very hesitant. And, she, and Darlene was like, he kissed me. You need to help me. And uh, that kind of got Angela into full gear. She goes, um, do you know anywhere where you can possibly be? And Angela's like, yeah. And so we meet up with Angela. And she's at the museum, the Queen's Museum, that um, Elliot and Angela used to run away off to. And he's not there. And her and Darlene have a bit of a conversation, a confrontation, if you will. And Angela's like, you know, Elliot was fine until Darlene moved back in the city and that they were never really close. And she questions the reason why Darlene's even caring after Elliot, that they're even doing things together again. And Darlene is like, he's, you know, Elliot saved their ass you know, plenty of times, why aren't you helping? And Angela's like, I, I basically, she can't do this anymore. She doesn't know Elliot, who he is, what the lies are about. Darlene's not telling her the truth and telling her what's going on. And she's, she's done with it. She's not going to do this anymore. And so she leaves and leaves Darlene. And now we cut back to Mr. Robot and Elliot um, at the, the subway station, at the train station. And Mr. Robot tries to jog Elliot's, mind you know about the train cars you remember the train cars and Elliot was like yeah I used to calculate you know their sizes and their widths and which one was the safest and when we go to the city we would get the safest car and then when we leave the city I would 
find the most dangerous car because I never, I did not want to come back home. I didn't want to leave the city. I wanted to stay more time in the city with his father. Another tip it was revealed was that Mr. Rohat was reassuring Elliot that basically his mother wasn't back to where they were going and that things were going to be okay. Again, Mr. Rohat was reassuring Elliot that he's going to explain everything. Uh, they get onto the, the train and uh, Elliot is again talking to his friend and he's like, things are coming back to me. Things are going to be okay. He's reassuring his friend that he he's going to figure everything out once he starts remembering everything and he'll have all the answers except for the fact that as he's staring at Mr. Robot that his father, who he perceived to be dead for the past 20 years, is sitting right across from him. Another interesting note is that, the, again, F Society... Um, the symbol of F Society is on these stickers or all over this, the subway there. And I don't know if it's another sign of Elliot's delusions or, again, because we're seeing everything from Elliot's perspective. But his paranoia is up even a bit higher as um, he perceives more and more people being, you know, the men in black and stuff. Then we cut away to uh, Tyrell and his wife, and they're at the hospital, and they, they had a baby boy. And Tyrell's wife reveals reveals to Tyrell that she had a child before when she was 15, that she uh, gave the child up. I mean, she never told anybody. She didn't really have to. And then she t- tells Tyrell that he can't come back home until he fixes his mess, until he fixes everything. Um Otherwise, she's going to move on. This is not going to work out. This is not what she wanted. And so they had that conversation. And Tyrell just goes into even more of a panic mode. So Willick goes to his office and uh, he doesn't realize it as he's um, sitting at his desk that the CEO of the company is already there. Uh, he thanks the CEO for the flowers, but the CEO kind of scoffs it off and says, you know, that's really his assistant. He has a way of flowers. Um, it really wasn't his doing. Um, and the CEO is there because Tyler Wellick is about to get fired. Uh, basically, he says, uh, you know, he knows about how uh, Knowles and him didn't get along. They had some kind of competitive friction. But... Um, and with the whole Sharon No thing and that the police consider him a person of interest and even uh, the, the husband Knowles thinks that he's responsible for Sharon's death and that basically E Corp can't afford another scandal and then they're, they're letting him go and Tyrell you know flips out he's like you can't do this you can't do this he gets really angry and the CEO was like kind of amused by Tyrell he thought you know his reaction to being fired was going to be interesting but uh, he's kind of a bit disappointed. And then Tyrell tries to explain, you know, how he's been at the company. He's on a fast track and he starts begging for his job. And he starts saying that he, um, you know, he loves E-Corp. Uh, but the CEO is ha- not having any of it. He, he doesn't really care and just kind of walks out. So Tyrell is left there. And uh, we cut away to him leaving the office and it looks like the two detectives are coming to see him again. And Tyrell is basically saying, you know, you can contact my lawyer or charge me with a crime. And he's not going to answer any of their questions. And he kind of just storms off out of a uh, evil, evil court, basically. So we come back to Elliot and Mr. Robot and Mr. Robot is a little frustrated with Elliot. He's like, I brought you to township for a reason, not to do some breaking and entering. And Elliot's like, do you remember here? This is, you know, my old room. Don't you remember it? And Mr. Robot's like, we don't we don't need to revisit this. And Elliot's like, I remember this. You you pushed me out of here when I was eight, when I told everyone your secret. And you pushed me off again at the boardwalk and he grabs uh, Mr. Robot and he pushes him towards the window and Mr. Robot is again trying to calm Elliot down saying you know that's not what happened you know you you I you know you were I wasn't angry with you that's not what happened Elliot you're angry with yourself uh for telling my secret um and Elliot is like no you, you pushed me 
for telling your secret and then you pushed me again because you thought I deserved it and uh, and uh, Mr. Robot's like you know you gotta let this go you've been angry about telling my secret you need to let go of the anger you don't deserve to hold this anger anymore it's okay and Elliot was like right you're right I need to let all this go and he tosses Mr. Robot out of the uh, the window and then we cut back to Angela and she's looking up on Terry Colby and the case and the, these different op-eds and I guess you can just say she's kind of just vegging on the internet um, she's at home now and her father comes in I guess he was on a run and he's trying to talk to her and he lets her know that Darlene is in town and Angela's a little shocked and he goes like what do you mean Darlene's in town and he goes yeah uh, I just saw her and then we cut to Gideon and Gideon's on the phone with the server farm in Dulles and he's like I, I didn't put this the C, uh, CS30 off of the honeypot. I, I need it back off, off the network. I never got any notification. He's like trying to argue with them to put it back on. And they're saying, no, that's not the case. Um, it was taken off the network and that it was uh, Tyler Wellick that told them to put it back on uh, the network. And so Gideon is just completely freaking out at this point. Um, because his plan to catch F Society to catch the hackers is failing. And for some reason, Tyler Willick is in a way responsible for putting the uh, server back on the, um, the place. And earlier than that, you know, he had gone to, uh, he basically had gone to the data place that the F Society and Dark Army had met and it was all burnt. Uh, Gideon's, you know, very suspicious. He's being very thorough because that's his nature. And um, to go pick up those drives that Elliot had dropped, he's, I guess you could say he's checking on Elliot's work. And uh, the place is burnt down. Um, and the drives are unrecoverable that were erased. So Gideon knows this, everything's just completely out of whack. Everything is, you know, coming undone, basically. So we cut to Angela and she's actually breaking into the the old house that was Elliot's house, which is, you know, occupied by somebody else now. And um, Darlene's there and they they have a conversation and Angela's like, you know, I haven't been here in years. And she's like, you know, the new family here is kind of weird, especially the dad. And then they uh, the new dad, I guess, Darlene notices uh, they hear a car is coming. So they go out the back door and they, they hide to the, on the side of the house to evade detection. And as they're um, waiting to make sure they don't get detected, they go to the side of the house and they realize that the, the window is broken and they look up and she's like, and Angela's like, isn't that um, Elliot's old room? And, and Darlene was like a little, um, she, she realizes where Elliot is going to go. And just before that, they had a bit of a moment where Darlene opened up and saying that she should be more open up to Angela. After all, she's she's like family. Um, so I guess you can say they kind of made up there. And then we cut to uh, Mr. Robot and Elliot. And they're, Elliot is helping Mr. Robot along because after all, he just tossed him out of a two-story building. And uh, Mr. Robot is hobbling along and they're, they're at a, uh, a graveyard site. And there, and Mr. Robinson is like, we're almost there, we're almost there, you know, you're just going to hurry along. So Mr. Robot pauses and Elliot's like, I thought you were going to take me somewhere safe. And Mr. Robot is trying to talk to Elliot. He goes, you know, I'm always going to be here with you. Um, we just wanted things got a little bit accelerated and. Elliot can hear Darlene and Angela and they're, they're running in the graveyard from the opposite direction towards Elliot and and uh, Mr. Rao is like okay, they're going to try to keep us apart they're trying to take me away from you but I'll never leave you and Elliot is like I don't understand what you're talking about and Mr. Rao things got accelerated but I, I want to be with you I'm never going to leave you I'm, I'm never going to leave you go alone again and Elliot is freaking out he doesn't understand and then uh, Mr. Robot kind of slides down up against the gravestone and sits there. And uh, Darlene and Angela go up to Elliot and they're asking him, who, who are you talking to? And Elliot's like, what do you mean who am I talking to? And he turns 
and Mr. Robot's not there, and it's the graveyard of his father, which says Edward Anderson, and that he died February 28, 1985. And Elliot starts to, to freak out. Um, Darlene tries to approach him to try to comfort him, and he, he pulls away, and he, he doesn't understand. Uh, Angelo is like telling him he's bleeding and he acknowledges um, that he's bleeding. He's bleeding up from the top of his head. Uh, his back starts to hurt. His leg starts to hurt. And the injuries that were once on Mr. Robot are now on Elliot. And um, Angela's asking him, like, who who do you think you were talking to? Who, who are you talking to? And Elliot's just freaking out. I'm crazy. I'm crazy. And I'm crazy. And we're we finally get the answer that Mr. Robot all along was, you know, a figment of Elliot's uh, imaginations here. So as Elliot is freaking out, he's talking to his friend uh, and he's like, I'm saying I'm crazy. I'm crazy. I can't believe this is happening. And he starts calming down. And Angela asks him again, you know, who do you, who are you, do you think you were talking to? And um, Elliot is uh, saying to his friend, you're going to make me say it. And then he says that I'm Mr. Robot. And um, it kind of cuts away. Um, he's kind of calmed down a bit. And Angela and Darlene are taking him to the train station. And Darlene and, and Elliot are going to go back to the city. And um, so he and Angela have a moment on the, the station. And Angela's re- trying to reassure Elliot and saying, you're going to be okay. And Elliot replies from a line from the Pulp Fiction movie that he's fucking from being okay. And Angela tries again to reassure him, you know, she's like, you know, don't take this the wrong way, but I am kind of envious of you. You get to talk to, you know, she wishes she can talk to her mom, even if um, she was a imaginary. And she just gives him a hug and tells him he's going to be okay. And uh, they cut away out to the uh, subway station and it's just him and, um, or not the subway station, but the subway car, it's just him and Darlene. And Darlene's like, I know you don't want to talk about it. And he's like, no, I don't want to talk about it. But she goes, I need I need to know, Elliot. Do you remember everything? Do you know what we've been doing? And finally, Darlene asked him, do you remember starting F Society? And then um, they cut away and it's Gideon. He's there to try to see uh, Tyler Willock at the e- Evil Corp building. But the assistant is packing away uh, Tyler's stuff. And he goes, uh, where's Mr. Willick? And she goes, oh, he got let go today. She doesn't know why. And he goes, well, can I see the CTO, Mr. Knowles? And she goes, don't you know? And uh, Gideon's like, he doesn't know that uh, the, the wife had been murdered. Then we cut away to Angela, and she's it's about nighttime now, and she's coming back, I guess, from the station from dropping off uh, Darlene and Elliot. And there is Ter- Terry Colby, and he's there. Um, and he's actually sitting down with her father and her, his father's very upset by this um, and basically says that uh, they need a he needs to talk they need to talk and uh, Terry Kobe was like well you met me at my house it should be you know fitting I meet you at yours and she goes what are you doing here I'm here to offer you a job um, and she doesn't understand she goes and he goes well, some very powerful people have um, spoken with me um, they like you they think you're a go-getter they think you we have what it takes and basically he's offering her a position at evil corp at the, the vacant position that tyler Wellick Wellick just left and she's like you gotta be kidding me i'm suing you guys and he goes that lawsuit is going to take years to happen and even if you were to get some kind of uh settlement is it's pennies on the dollar you know eventually after they've exhausted all the resources and it goes on for seven years um evil corp will pay out and it's it's not going to be worth anything it's not going to do anything to change evil corp and, and he basically gives her a deadline of 24 hours you know you have to make a decision and let them know whether or not you're going to take this new job at evil corp which is um tyler Wellick's old position so Angela is left here with a, di- a bit of a dilemma. And I guess you can say she's actually, she might actually be thinking about it. You know, she is out of work and everything. And she could use the money. She is in a tremendous amount of debt. And so is her father. Then we cut away to back to Elliot and Darlene. And Darlene is going for his medications. And basically she asks him, were you even taking any of these? Were you just filling them up and dumping them? She's going to go down to the pharmacy and get his pills to get him back on his meds, uh, he needs to stay here. So have a bit of a conversation and 
should they continue on with the plan? Elliot wants to end it. And Darlene was like, no. She goes, I know you feel really shitty. And I know you don't understand what's really going on. But this was your idea. Deep down inside, you know you wanted to do this. Everyone had a reason for doing this. And that what he wanted, what they started was real. It wasn't fictitious. And Elliot was like, he doesn't even know it was real. He doesn't even know it was him. And she's saying it was. It was his idea. It was a brilliant idea. It's going to work. As soon as the infected server is back online, you basically the game is on. And so she, she leaves the apartment. They're going to talk about this more as she gets back. She's going to go and get his medication. As soon as she leaves, Tyler Wellick walks in. And Tyler Wellick puts a, you know, tells him to calm down, to be quiet. And uh, they're going to have a very interesting conversation. So Tyler is like, I didn't want anyone to know that I am here. And yeah, he takes off his coat, he locks the door and he uh, sits down and he puts on the same gloves that he had on when he beat up the homeless person. And he tells Elliot that, he knows that he's responsible for F Society, the All Safe Hack, the Infected Server, and he's the one constant in the, all the variables, and he wants to know what the plan is. And Elliot's going to tell him the plan. Uh, and then he t- reveals to Elliot that he had murdered a woman uh, two days ago, uh, strangled her with his bare hands, and that uh, he doesn't feel guilty about any of it. And then he steps closer to Elliot as a kind of almost an intimidation car- tactic. And then um, we cut away, and they are at the F Society headquarters, the uh, hangout. And uh, Tyra Wellick looks at him, and he goes, this is it? And he goes, this is the place? And he goes, there's, there's no one else? And, and Elliot goes, no, it's, it's, it's just me. Um, and Tyler Wellick turns to Elliot, and he goes, I, I knew that we were going to be working together. I knew this is this is something that was meant to happen. And Elliot was like, yeah, okay. And he, he um, turns in and looks at the popcorn machine that um, has the gun that Darlene put in there and that is the end of the episode. So pretty much only the real like hacking thing that was going on here was uh, the Pentium 2 a chip which was real and the fact that in 1995 there was an 800 megabyte hard drive that was I guess you consider a very big hard drive now which is laughable considering that I in my hand right now I have a flash drive that's no bigger than barely bigger than a quarter you know sits on my keychain and it's 8 gigabytes and that is way stronger powerful hard drive or portable device than anything that was in a computer back in that time period. Uh, The other thing was, you know, Pulp Fiction was a real movie, so it was Time Cop and Stargate. What was very interesting about this episode was just basically the kind of, basically the, you know, the psychological breakdown that was happening with Elliot, the manic faces, him going up and down and kind of back and forth seemed pretty realistic and consistent. the other thing is, you know, everyone seemed to be facing the the realities of their situation. Um, Angela not having any source of income, being in a tremendous amount of de- <coughs> debt, and coming to the realization that uh, Terry Colby may have offered her a way out of that position. Um, Gideon realizing that everything he's worked his entire existence and ability for and trying to save all safe. Um, is not going to happen. He's not going to save the company. It's just crumbling around him. That is the reality that he is in. Darlene facing the reality that uh, her, her brother, whom she knows is crazy, is truly crazy, and that she's doing this plan, a well thought out and well designed plan as it may be, that they're about to execute, and for whatever purposes and designs that they were doing this for, um, that he is not altogether there and she is going to be saddled with the burden of basically possibly carrying him across the line to make sure that their their idea, this project, is going to go off without a hitch. And then you have Tyra Wellick facing the reality of, you know, facing murder charges, losing his job, and trying to 
attain the position that he's seeking in life. Um, what that is, is I guess constantly shifting for him. Um, it was CTO going the directory of possibly being, you know, the CEO of Evil Corp. And now it's, you know, either taking down Evil Corp or somehow turning in F Society to again regain his position with CTO of Evil Corp, the, you know, and getting back with his wife and having a kid and a child and, and that that lifestyle that he seeks for himself. That um, you know, being part of the one percent. And then you have Elliot come to the realization with the the, dismi- the demise of Mr. Robot that he is truly crazy. That not only is he, you know, talking to an imaginary friend, but he actually actually has an imaginary friend. That he uh, has no idea what is real and what is not real. And that what he has been doing, he has absolutely, you know, no control of. Uh, whatever that may be, um, the designs and purposes of having F Society and taking down Evil Corp. He has no idea what reality is, and he's facing that now. And even with the team up with Tyrell, he's still faced with that that unreality that he's living in right now. So that's where we're pretty much at with the, the, you know, the episodes is everyone coming to head with facing this reality. Is F Society actually going to be able to take down this corporate conglomerate? You know, is Dark Army going to be there and take down China? And the other thing, which is the last of what is real, is um, given the, the fact that we've known from the very beginning that Elliot is an unreliable narrator, but now that we know the extent of his unre- unreliability, when they're at the F Society headquarters at the arcade, Elliot tells Tyler Willick that the plan was to encrypt all of E Corp's data and that F Society would be the ones to control the private keys that to un- unencrypt that data. But the plan has been from the very beginning since Ali has been brought into F Society was that they were going to wipe out the data a la, you know, Fight Club. So I don't know if he told that just for Tyra Wellick's purposes or if somehow the plan has changed or maybe the plan was originally to encrypt the data altogether and made everyone else believe that they wiped out Evil Corp's data. Um, I guess it remains to be seen what actually happens in the season finale. Now, for the uh, season finale, I made a special announcement where in, in which I will be giving away a Raspberry Pi 2, which is a similar device that was utilized by Elliot in Steel Mountain to uh, hook up to the AC control, the climate control systems, uh, which allows F Society to hack into the Steel Mountain network. I will be giving away a device similar to that uh, during the season finale live show. And I also will be doing a Periscope uh, live reaction to that season finale episode. Uh, if you check into the feed, you'll, you'll hear the uh, special announcements. You can also go to the Facebook page, Mr. Robot F Society R- I- IRC group, and you will see the details for the giveaway and the and for the Periscope. Uh, you can find me on Musings of the Shibe. Uh, that's my Twitter handle, and that's how you'll be able to follow me and find me on Periscope as well as Twitter to participate in that giveaway. So thank you very much for listening and uh, into the season finale. Thank- this has been a Herosha Shine Space Odyssey Network production. <laughs>